All right, I'm going to do a video on electrical, building a house electrical. I'll show you not um, how I've done it, but kind of explain the functions of each of the wires in the electrical, what people call the ground neutral and hot. Here it is coming into the, from the meter to the panel. And I have a 200 amp breaker here. And I've got aluminum wires coming out, going all the way to the house, underground, and I have a panel inside the house, which I'll show you here in a minute. But first thing I want to talk about is the aluminum wires. Some people wouldn't use aluminum wires, um, depending on your jurisdiction. You may not be able to use aluminum service wires, but if you can, use aluminum wires. There's nothing wrong with aluminum wires. And any electrician that tells you different, here's, all, here's what you need to do. Point up. 50 miles of aluminum wires going all, 50 miles of aluminum wires going all the way back to the source, to the power plant. So, a, aluminum is a common conductor. The reason I wouldn't recommend it inside the building is because the melting point of aluminum is lower than the melting point of copper, therefore fire hazard. But if you can get away with aluminum entrance conductors, use aluminum. It's a lot cheaper. I use aluminum. It's cheaper. It's, it isn't any better or worse. You have to o size the aluminum wires a little bigger than copper wires because it's less of a efficient conductor but it's it's fine use aluminum wires if you can or use copper i don't care but don't say don't tell if you're an electrician don't be telling people hey we got to use them because it's better because <laughs> it's not true anyway so let's look at a the, the this is a hot and now this is energized it comes from my service, which doesn't have a fuse or anything, and goes out two hots and a neutral and ground. Now, the ground and the neutral in this box and then this box only are bonded together. You can see that the ground and the neutral are tied together to the case of the box. So the ground and the neutral are bonded together only at this point. Now, the code calls the neutral the grounded conductor. The code calls the ground the grounding conductor. So if you're looking at the code, grounded conductor is neutral wire is what typical people call it, or the white wire. Grounding conductor is the um, equipment ground or the green wire or the bare copper wire. They aren't the same wire. Just because they go to the same place does not mean that their function is the same. They aren't the same wire. Their function is not the same. And I'll show you here in a minute what their function is. But I'll check that out. Geese. Anyway, so that's the panel. The neutral at the first point of disconnect is the only time you tie the neutral to the ground or at a transformer at a separate separately derived system is what the code calls it so i'm going to put this back close it you've seen it here you've seen what um, my thoughts are on aluminum all right now it goes underground comes up right here to my electrical panel this is the electrical panel to the house 200 amp if you look, most panels come with this. It bonds the neutral to the ground. The only time you want to use this is at the first point of disconnect. Otherwise, take it out. The neutral is not the ground. Which, whoops. So the neutral is isolated from the ground. It's very important, and I'm going to show you why. All right, so I got, grabbed a piece of rebar. Uh, this will 
you could use a ground rod, right? So mo here's, here's where the confusion comes. People think about a six footer. People think that the purpose of the ground wire is to ground the system. It's not. The purpose of the ground wire is to trip the breaker. Let me let me use it. I'll show you an example. Oh shoot. Easy. That's good. I gotta be able to pull this thing out. I'm not gonna drive it in all the way. What I'm gonna do. And while I'm doing this, you can tell me what you think is going to happen. I'm going to hook the ground wire. Directly to this as best I can. I got to pull this out. I could probably pull it out with the ground wire. So I have the ground wire there. Now what I'm going to do. is on this hot panel, I'm gonna hook the ground wire directly to the 20 amp breaker and turn it on. Now, this will, prove, this will show you and kind of give you an understanding of what the purpose of the ground wire is for. It's not to ground the system. Put in the comments what you think is gonna happen. It's not YouTube magic. Uh, I'll show you. We're going to hook the ground wire. Not touching, I don't want to touch the case. Directly to, yeah, let's, let's, let's insulate this. Let me use the black wire. I'll swap this out. We're going to put the black wire on here. It's insulated, that way I can put my meter on it. And then I'll change it over at the rod. All right, that's off. No power is going through it. We have wire there going to here. Swap this out to the hot wire. It's not hot, it's off right now. We're going to go from the panel. The ground's pretty wet too. We went from the panel directly to this ground rod or a piece of rebar that's in the ground. I'm going to turn this on. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to blow up? Let's stand away. What? It didn't blow up? Ground wire? Or hot wire directly to that and it's not tripping the breaker what the ground wire trips the breaker no yeah the ground wire is supposed to trip the breaker that's why you have a ground wire is to trip the breaker let's get the old meter out the old harbor freight trusty meter and we'll go amps, 40 amps. How many amps do you think it's drawing? I'd say four or five. Five amps. I could drive four, four of those together before that pulled enough amp amperage to trip the breaker. That's literally pulling five amps. It's not tripping the breaker. I did all that and said all that to say this. Let me turn that off. 
because it's still dangerous. There's, there's voltage going into the ground, there's amperage going into the ground. The purpose of the, what people call ground wire, what the code calls grounding conductor, is to trip the breaker. Okay, let's say you have a can light in the bathroom and the hot wire, which is the black wire or the red wire typically, is touching the case of the can. Is that gonna trip the breaker? No. <laughs> the only way that trips the breaker is if um, the ground wire is connected properly and it's uninhibited all the way back to the panel to the breaker that it's at. That's the purpose of the ground is to bring the current back to trip the breaker. So make sure that you hook up your grounds. Now let's say you don't know about this and you are in a bathroom and it's a metal can light and you go to change a light. What's gonna happen? Is it gonna trip the breaker when you touch it? No, you are gonna be a path to back to the source, which in this case is the electric pole over here. You're gonna be a path back to the source. It's gonna use you and send voltage through you. Okay, it'll send voltage however, or it'll send current however it can through you, through wires. Electricity doesn't take the path of least resistance. It takes all paths. If you're, you aren't, a, we aren't very good resistors, but we still get shocked. So electricity follows paths to back to the source. Now that's the whole purpose of the ground wire is to trip the breaker. So when you're wiring your house, make sure you understand that the neutral and the ground are two different things. Now let's, uh, let me undo this. Now, because the neutral is hooked at the ground, another misconception is, at the pole, another misconception is there's no current going through the neutral. Well, there's current going through the neutral. Any motor load, it's got to go through the neutral back to the source. That's what um, creates the motor load or any load, you know, lights or whatever, resistors, any resistor load. So I'll demonstrate that. On your light switches, if there's a fault to the light switch, you won't know it if it's not grounded unless you touch that screw. If there's a fault to the light switch and you touch that screw and it's not properly grounded, it'll never trip the breaker. So make sure you ground things and make sure you don't confuse the neutral and the ground. The neutral, and also make sure you understand the neutral is not neutral. It has current going through it, and we will, I'll show you that here in a minute. All right, now the neutral wire. I've got a temporary outlet back there for my saw that hooks up on this breaker. It's on a GFCI. The neutral wire. The neutral is not the ground. Here's. A, I'll show you something. Uh, this is on amps. Let's see how many amps. Six amps, five amps. You got to sit down. Five amps. Let's see how much is on the neutral. This is the circuit that goes to that. isn't neutral. I don't know why people call it that. It's a grounded conductor. It goes back to the source. It's not looking for a path to ground. It's looking for a back path back to source. It will use the ground. Now, this saw has a three prong outlet. because it's got a metal case, right? If it's insulated and it's all plastic, then you don't need the ground, but it's got a metal case. Let's see how much, this is the same circuit. Let's see how much the ground has. Barely any 
anything on the ground. That's why you separate the neutral, the ground, to trip the breaker. If you don't, you're asking for trouble.